Hi everyone and welcome back. We have some exciting news for the S30 and the S50 smart telescopes. Finally, the 60 seconds exposure time is now available for these two telescopes, also on S30 and S50. And I do want to test this feature out tonight and show you the results and compare them to see if also S50 and S30 will work well with this feature. Going from 10 to and 30 seconds to 60 seconds, I think it's very important to have a good polar alignment. If you want to see how to get the best polar alignment possible with these telescopes, do check also my uh, tutorial on how to set up the S30 and S50 for EQ mode and have a perfect polar alignment to get the best possible results when using 60 seconds exposures with these telescopes. And I will link this video uh, at the end or in the video description. Now we'll wait until uh, night will come and we'll test the 60 seconds feature on both telescopes and we'll compare the results after on the PC. Okay, so we are testing the S30 and S50 smart telescopes. Tonight I will test the S50 and S30 telescopes with the new firmware update that allow us to take 60 seconds exposure time. By the way, if you don't have yet any of these telescopes and you are interested in buying one, affiliate links are available in the video description. I have already started now with the S30. Unfortunately, we have a lot of clouds passing by and look how we have also the International Space Station. I want to catch, capture it. I think it's the International Space Station, very bright. Yeah. Well, I'll try and capture it. Look. Whoa, and let's focus. Live. International Space Station. And another satellite, a smaller one. Or maybe it's the Chinese Space Station. But it's very bright. Now let's zoom in with the probe mode. We are at 16 millimeters. And we're filming the International Space Station. ISO 64000, one ten of a second, and let's go faster a little bit. 125. Now let's begin also with the system. And I have to recenter it a little bit. And this, let's see. So let's uh, click on the image of the system. I can see the advance, normal, it should move. Yeah, it's here. And this will get polar line deviation. We may just leave it at 45 and then check it again. I notice there's some error here. Sometimes it doesn't show the correct, correct position only with the S50. Maybe it's an older model. Or... Okay, please adjust until the angle. Okay, so we need to get it to 47. So there's uh, no, yeah, higher. 46, 47, get polar line deviation and star deviation. And we rotate now. And finally, the clouds are going away. Finally, finally, it's not. <laughs> South is full with clouds. We have some black here on the north. And after it, we can take also flights. So I'll just do it with the phone. Okay, so 1.2 and 2 degrees. Not much. Let's see. Two degrees, you can press them like this maybe. Zero six, zero three, okay, and one point two degrees down. Maybe not sure how it's how correct it is. Hold it straight. Zero nine. There we go. Lower a little bit. Zero seven, zero seven, okay. 06, 
Yes, me. You are zero zero six. Okay. Go back. Don't forget calibration also. We save the main switch. Finish calibration and select shoot flats. Welcome to the C Star flat field calibration guide. Flat field calibration corrects uneven brightness, sensor dust, and dark corners in your images. There are two methods for flat field calibration. So this is in a quarter mode at night. In daytime I recommend doing this in Altazimum mode so it will face the night directly. And then you won't need to hold the phone still. So this is one method with a phone, with a tablet, with a LED light panel, or with a piece of paper or white material like a tissue. Got it? Okay, we took that. Now we go back and the Atlas, select M81 and M82. M81, not the target position, we select the position, it looks like it will be better. Okay, and go to. Okay, so now we leave the pen to run, the status with this S30, and I'll see you in the next part of the video. Finally, we have the results. We are now in PixInsight, and we have two image stacks with each telescope S50 on the left and S30 on the right. They are short plans because I had a lot of clouds passing and I did uh, restart it a few times with uh, each telescope, but the quality doesn't matter so much in this test because we are testing how good the stars look with uh, 60 seconds exposure time. And before starting, I went here at image, synchronize, and synchronize all the images, then press OK. So when we zoom in, it will zoom in in all these images and this will help uh, very much this comparison. So here on the left, we have the images captured with the S50 Smart Telescope and on the right with the S30. We already can see here that we have a little bit more noise on the S30 images. Here it seems on this one, we do have also some stacking gradients. Probably because I've continued the stack before, then we had I had clouds, I recentered. So this is the explanation. And zooming in, we can see very small elongation, the stars around. Here we do see this uh, star elongated, but I think this is a double star. Or could be also an asteroid, but I think it's a double star. Let's move to the Cigar Galaxy. And we can see here also very small elongation on this image, also here. And now zooming in on the sister S30 images, round stars in this one, here we do have some smaller elongation. On this two, from these two tests, we notice on the one on the right, the stars are not looking so good compared with the one on the left. Here on uh, the S50, we have also a little bit more elongation in uh, this one on the right compared with the first. And uh, before getting to the conclusions, I do want to show you also some single uh, exposures and uh, talk more about what happened at the night of the test. We'll go here and we are at S30 images and we have single exposures. We'll open the FITS files here and also zoom in. So I've selected here some single exposures of 60 seconds. Uh, we can see the stars have very small elongation, they are round and we are looking at the second one. Here we have some small star tails. On the third one uh, as well, here looks better and here we have round stars. So you can see not all the images are perfect. And uh, the same with the S50, we'll go on the single exposures. So here we have 60 seconds, round stars, 
It looks very good. We can actually compare it now with 30 second exposures, exposure, and both they are looking very good. And let's check another 60 seconds, and here we have trails. We've seen also single images with round stars and also with trails. We've seen the same on uh, the stacking. So let's see what this means. Can we get uh, uh, good results often with the S50 and S30 with 60 seconds? I would say yes, but with some ex exceptions. Uh, why in other images we had uh, trails? One would be wind, because if we have stronger wind and we are going uh, and we are imaging with 60 seconds exposures uh, with the S30 or S50, we might have starters in our images and tracking might not be as good. So this is one possible reason. The second one, because on the night of the test, I had a lot of haze coming in clouds. This could be another reason that we had in some of the images, single exposures or stack starters. I think the S50 and S30, they are also guiding and correcting the tracking when needed. And uh, because of the clouds, the guiding guiding might not work properly. Okay, and other reason that uh, this could happen is the tripod, or maybe if you didn't lock something well, like I forgot to lock the photography plate of the fluid head on the video tripod where I had the S50 smart telescope, but after some time I observed it and I locked it well. In uh, this situation, I had uh, the Star Adventure 2i that is solid enough for the S30 and also the video tripod. is a heavy-duty tripod and won't make any problems with the S50 Smart Telescope. So this was not the problem here. And another important reason that this can happen is the polar alignment. So if you don't have a very good polar alignment, for 60 seconds exposures, you might end up also with star trails. So considering all these factors when you'll decide imaging with 60 seconds. So the question is why to image with 60 seconds if we can also get good results with 10 seconds, 20 or 30? The answer is simple. With longer exposures, we'll be able to capture more photons in our images. Also will allow us to capture fainter details. LBN 438, the sand wall. It's a faint dusty nebula in La Certa. So here I had exposures of 1000 seconds to get a better signal to noise ratio. It uh, does matter a lot. Really, it does matter to be able to take longer exposures, especially on images like this. And let me show you another one. This is the Umbrella Galaxy, also a very distant galaxy that having the possibility to take longer exposures will help capture more photons. These images were captured with a 10-inch telescope. The aperture also made a difference. However, even with a smaller aperture, having the possibility to take longer exposures does help a lot. And here we have another one, the Linz Dark Nebula, LDN1622, known also as the Boogeyman Nebula. And here I've took almost 14 hours integration time with exposures of 5 minutes with the 10-inch telescope and the cold astrophotography camera. So for this kind of deep sky objects, having the possibility to take longer exposures does help a lot. After testing them in the same time on the same target, I have to say both perform really well. I was expecting S50 to have more difficulties because it has a longer focal length. So I need to consider also that uh, star trails will be more noticeable on the S50 if uh, the polar alignment is not as good. Because we do have also higher focal length compared with the S30 smart telescopes. Looking on the results, I was really surprised that uh, also the S50 did very well on this test. Also, don't forget to check my other videos with the S50 and S30 Smart Telescope. And if you are interested to order any of these telescopes, affiliate links are available in the video description. Hope I didn't forget anything. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I want to give thanks to all the channel members that 
are supporting the channel. It means a lot. And if you want to support also the channel and help me make more videos and tutorials, hit on the join button and become a member. You'll get also access to master photography data that I'm sharing for channel members. Stay safe and don't forget to look at the stars.